Hello everyone, it's Karen Berniston, and I am a dye designer. I've been designing dyes for many years, but about four years ago, I went into business with my friend Tanya, who owns Riley & Company, so we are in cahoots together, and we have a website, karenberniston.com, where you can find all of my dye designs. Now, just this week, we've expanded with 14 new dyes, so I have a few things to go over in the next 20 minutes. We do have a show special, and I'll go over that in just a little bit. First, I want to show you our new release, brand new release, and we're also going to cram in a project, so we got a lot to get done. Okay, before I dive into the new release, let me just explain kind of what came before. We have pop-up ball dies. So the first one was the surprise ball. That one flattens down into about a five-inch square card, and then because it does have a rubber band inside, then you kind of need to use some kind of closure on your card to keep it closed. And so we have this really handy flap and closure die set that will give you the pieces that you need to make a flap, you know, twine closure. And that could either be petal fold like this, or it could just be maybe a single flap on the side of the card. Okay, so surprise ball and flap and closure. Then, because people were really enjoying making animals out of the surprise ball, they asked if they could have a smaller version of the ball to be able to use as the head so that the head and the body would be different sizes. And so then we came out with the Bitty Ball pop-up. So the Bitty Ball pop-up is very much geared towards making animals. It goes together the same as the surprise ball, but the decorator pieces that come with the Bitty Ball have a lot of the pieces that you need for animals. So arms and ears and smile and eyes, bow tie, that all comes included in the base Bitty Ball set. You could make a chicken, a bear, a dog, just with the Bitty Ball, stacking the Bitty Ball on top of itself. Um, so the add-on sets really, you know, are geared more towards using with the bitty ball or the bitty ball and the surprise ball, if that makes sense, because you might decide that you want to have the bigger ball on the bottom. But, you know, you really do kind of need the base. This is really the foundation die for all of your animal making. And then we have animal add-ons one, animal add-ons two, and animal add-ons three. So those are you know, pigs, foxes, cats, uh, giraffe, elephant, hippo, and we have moose and reindeer and penguin. Okay. So and you can see when you stack the two together, you can see the difference in the size, but you can always make animals by just stacking two bitty balls together if you prefer. Okay, so in our new release, we now have character add-ons. So the first one, character add-ons one, will make your Halloween characters, make like a little pumpkin head, you can make a vampire, you can make just a jack-o'-lantern. So those are made using the character add-ons one set. Here's a card using that flap enclosure. So flap enclosure is still your best bet for keeping them closed. And then you see the vampire in a card there and that spins around on a brad. Okay, character add-ons one. And then let's look at character add-ons two. And it is Santa and Mrs. Claus. And once again, you can build those on a brad so they can spin in your card. Um, very much needs the bitty ball because you are going to use the arms and you know some of the decorator pieces out of the bitty ball you know to do noses and things but in the case of santa i use the bitty ball on the top and the surprise ball on the bottom although he could easily be made the same as mrs claus where it's bitty bitty in our last release we came out with the tiny house pop-up die set so it makes this adorable little tiny house it has the doors and windows and flower boxes and stone path and a really cool stamping feature that actually stamps the shingle pattern onto the roof as you die cut it. So really cool popular die set, Tiny House Pop-Up. And in that same release, we came out with our first of the add-on sets. So this is the Mushroom Tiny House add-ons. And all this does is adds on the pieces that you would need with the foundation die, which is your Tiny House Pop-Up, to fashion a mushroom tiny house. So it gives a different little roof and you've got rounded doors and windows and things, but then you still use like your flower boxes from your foundation set. You've got the little grass piece in that little mushroom tiny house add-ons. And now in our new release, we have two new tiny house add-ons sets. So the first is the haunted tiny house add-ons. So that's going to make use of the foundation die, which is a tiny house, but then now you're gonna have new windows and doors and shutters and boards and a ghost and a spider web and a spider. You're gonna have a bat a uh, little jack-o'-lantern and a spooky fence. Those all come in the little haunted tiny house add-ons. And then what I've used here in conjunction with that is our new Happy Halloween die that does come with a shadow. And then to make the tree and the moon for both the inside of the card and the outside, I used one of our previously released dies, which is our landscape scene. So all of our dies work really, really well with each other. 
And so that's a great one to use as a spooky tree and a moon with your haunted tiny house add-ons. And then the other new tiny house add-ons is the gingerbread tiny house add-ons. So once again, you're gonna use the foundation die of the tiny house, but then the add-on set is going to add like the lattice for the roof and the little round candies that are used here on the path and on the roof. You've got panels to go on the chimney, the fronts and the sides of the house. The windows and the door are from the tiny house, but you get new, slightly larger versions of those that you can cut out of white so that it looks like you've mounted your windows and your door with frosting. You get candy canes, gumdrops, gingerbread man, peppermint candy, that all comes in that set. You can also play around with making flat houses and using your add-on sets. We have a new street lantern pop-up, and this one's a fun one. It's very versatile. You can combine the pole and the lantern in different ways to make different looks, and it can be used flat, or it can be used with the included little generic pop-up platform that will bring it forward. It comes with some holiday sashes and bows and wreaths for when you want to use it for holiday cards, but of course it can be used year round. You can also explore what you can do with those extra pieces. So you can see here, the background of the lantern really looks like a bell. So I made bells out of this one and actually used the swag to fashion a wreath. So very versatile set, the street lantern pop-up. You can always shorten it if you need to use it like I did here with the gingerbread house, cut it out of gingerbread colors and just shorten the pole before adding the lantern. Okay, these next couple of cards really make use of a lot of the new dies together. So I'm starting here with the front of this card, which has our new Long Nature Edges too, which includes this row of flowers and a row of trees. The trees do have a stamping feature on the die where if you ink them up before you die cut, they'll put this little swirl pattern on the foliage. And you're also seeing one of our little tiny gnomes here. So the tiny gnomes are new in this release. There's different ways that you can combine the pieces even to make a little Christmas caroler if you want for maybe in front of that street lantern. Uh, you can use the included stamp feature on those tiny gnomes for the beard, the mustache, and the braids. And they can be fashioned as little Christmas gnomes or year round gnomes. So you're seeing here kind of a year round gnome and then more of them in the bench. So the bench is it was requested as a re-release, but I can't really call it a re-release because it's been redesigned. So most importantly, it's now a glue-in design. So the prior version of it, when I was a licensed artist, you had to cut it into your card, and so then it was always the same color as the card, and you had to cut another one and glue it over the top. This is better because you just glue it in, and you can cut it out whatever color you want. But beyond that, it's also been designed a little differently with some extra supports, and now it's got a little optional stitch pattern in it that you can use as a stencil. And it comes with more pieces because it comes with two extra little pop-up platforms that can animate things in the bench. The pillow and the little flower actually come with it as well as the grass. So you get lots more pieces in it. And then it really is just perfect to use with the street lantern, the tiny gnomes. You can see here the hello is new. It's a hello with a shadow and it does have an optional stitch line detail on it that you can use with a pen to add stitching to it. So here's those long nature edges again. You can see them here, the, the um, trees on the stitched hill with the stamp pattern in them, and then the flowers it does come with the little hearts, but then it also comes with a row of snowflakes. Okay, and then you can always use your trees bare. So you can see that same line of trees there without the foliage piece put behind it. So long nature edges too, tiny gnomes, garden bench, Street Lantern, Hello, all of these are new. And then I've got a couple other just examples here. Here's the garden bench again with the tiny gnomes, this time fashioned as Christmas gnomes. There is a cute little jingle bell in that tiny gnome set for when you wanna make Christmas gnomes and a little snowflake as well. And you can see another way of using the Street Lantern here with the swag across it and cut out of silver. And then there's those snowflakes from that long nature edges too across the bottom, or the bottom and the top here in this card. All of our previously released dies go well, you know, with the new dies. So here's a little winter animals penguin sitting in the bench, but then also combined with the street lantern, the new long nature edges too, and then some of our previously released words. Speaking of words, one of our most popular ones is our Merry Christmas script die. That one's been very popular and some folks have asked, hey, could we have a shadow for it? So in this release, we have just the standalone shadow die that fits that Merry Christmas. So if you already own that Merry Christmas or if you buy it in the future, just know that you now have a shadow option die for it to put that perfect shadow around it. 
couple cute cards from the team. Here's one by Kelly Booth using the new script Hello Die and the garden bench on the inside. But then one of our previously released animals, our nature edges, and then garden charm. So you can see how well everything just coordinates with what came before. So Kelly Booth made that card. Sandy Diller sent me this one for my birthday, and she used the tiny gnomes. Happy birthday is a previously released die. I thought this was really clever. She used our evergreen pivot panels. You can see the shape of those evergreen trees. But then instead of decorating with the evergreen trees, she added the little tiny gnomes, gave them little birthday hats out of our birthday charms. So super cute little birthday card by Sandy Diller for me. And then here's another cute one. This one also by Kelly Booth, where she's used our charm accordion, which by the way, is part of the special that I'm going to be telling you about. And then she's used the tiny gnomes on that and you know, all the little flowers and stuff. So super cute new hello. That can be used without the shadow. So you see she really didn't have room for the shadow. So she used just the inner script hello on that. Okay, this one really is a straight re-release. This is the Iron Fence pop-up. I did bring this out when I was a licensed artist with another company and many, many customers have asked for it to come back. So it makes this cool arching fence Really quick and easy assembly on this one, and you can of course do it for any theme. It does come with two birds, and the only thing I changed on this from its previous days was that I added some wings to the birds, so they have a little bit more detail now than they did before. And you can of course use that for any season. So here's that same iron fence, this time cut out of white and used in a Christmas card. And kind of a fun thing to do with the birds is just to stop your cutting pad short so that it doesn't round the head of the bird and just cut it into a point with your scissors and then they become cardinals. And then the final two dies in this release are our pop-up snowman and then word set 13 snow that goes really well with it. Long nature edges too, that's such a great one to go with the snowman. You can make those lines of snowflakes, but then you also get an individual snowflake that comes with the snowman. So that's also a good one to kind of sprinkle around snowflakes pattern plate in the background of this card. You choose your card size with our dies. So for this one, I've done like an A2 horizontal landscape card, but then in this card by Kelly Booth, she's done a, is it a six, one, two, three, no, it's a five and a half, five and a half inch square card. Once again, with the long nature edges, two snowflakes used on the front of the card. And then she's got her cute little snowman in there wearing bright red boots, carrying a candy cane from her holiday charms. She's used the first long nature edges here with the trees attached in the background and then that word set 13 snow. Okay, let me show you how easy it is to assemble and install the garden bench pop-up inside a card. So I've already done my die cutting. I cut the bench itself out of kind of a pearlescent white. And then there's a little piece of grass. So I cut two of those. So I can put one on each little leg. There's a little fringed pillow. I cut two of those and inked the edges. And then there's a little standalone flower in the set that really works nicely on the pillows for those kind of spring and summer looks. Okay, so then I've got my pillows ready to go. And then there's these two little pop-up extra platforms to be able to bring things forward in the bench. So when those die cut, there's one end that basically die cuts kind of a little arrow into the end, and that's so that you know which way is up. All right, and I cut two of the small and one of the long. All right, first things first, I'm gonna find the score lines in my bench. So right out here on the end, there's little tabs. I always find it easier to put my thumbnail in the score line that the machine has made and fold it towards myself first. I just find it folds easier that way. But in this case, those are going to be mountain folds. So then I'll just immediately reverse them. Okay, same thing, turning it around on the other end. There's a little score line out on the end. Those are the glue in tabs. So it does need to be a mountain fold, but I'm going to fold valley towards myself first, then reverse it into a mountain, okay? Now I've got my tabs ready. Now I've got to work on the inside. There's a score line right here that basically just goes kind of all the way across the middle of the bench. So you can just fold that over. Okay, so we're just basically kind of folding the bench in half there. And now we've got the seat of the bench, but we have no place to put our lemonade, right? These need to be the arms that come out. So they actually pivot right here. And here are some little score lines. And not at the bottom, because actually this is gonna, let me show you what I mean. If I, if I reverse that, stick my finger underneath it, reverse it over here, stick my finger underneath it, then what's gonna happen at the bottom is it's actually going to fold the, that little location, okay? So that this section of the bench will just go kind of vertical. All right, and then 
That is all there is to it. So now I have that little pop-up bench and it's ready to go in the card. Okay, let's talk about those little platforms. There's a fold next to the where the tapers end. Then there's one somewhere along the piece. You'll be able to see it. And then again, next to the tapered tab on the other end. So this is just a little kind of platform that looks like this, all right? And it's the arrow end where the die cut has cut the little arrow into it that is going to hook anywhere along this little section right here. So basically you've got four little spots here that you can decide where you want your platform to go. And it's that little arrow end that's gonna hook over and attach to the back of the bench. Okay, so I put a little adhesive underneath it. Okay, and then I'm gonna choose this little section right here and I'm gonna hook it over and pinch it so that it's basically attached back there. All right, and then if I flatten this out, the, but this is going to tell me where it goes because it needs to hook under the bench on the slat where it fits in the flat position. So see, right there. So you can just do that in the flat position. I mean, I need some glue underneath it, but you see how that it's going to tell you where it goes, which is kind of a nice feature. All right, so get that through that slat. Okay, and then as it opens, see, it's going to pop up that extra little platform. All right, and then the little small ones are the same. There's got a little fold next to the tapered tab. Then there's a very, very close to that is the second fold. And then again at the other end next to the tapered tab. So it basically makes that little, I mean, this one's a little platform. It only brings the things very far, you know, very, it's very close to the back of the bench, but it just gives a little bit of elevation. Okay, so adhesive behind the arrow end, the tapered tab at the arrow end. And then I decide where I want it. And that first section of the back of the bench is where it always goes. Okay, then I flatten and it will tell me where it hooks under for the other side. And it goes through this first slat into the back of the bench. So see, they basically just span. And then as the, oops, as the bench opens, then you'll get that other little platform. Okay, now I'm going to put another one of those little small ones right over here. Okay, ta-da! I've got my three platforms in and now this is ready to go in the card. So you choose your card size. It just needs to be a top fold card. I've done a four and a half inch square. I've decorated the front with some of the new dies, made it kind of two-tone on the inside, used the foliage dies as clouds in the sky, and then now I'm ready to put my bench in the card. And what's nice about this is you do that in the fully flat position. So even though you've trained all the folds, you're going to fold it all the way flat again so that you can basically get it lined up right in the fold of the card and then it's these four tabs that are going to fold under and glue to the card. So let me just add my adhesive on the top two here and here. Okay, then using my thumbnails to make sure the bench is in the fold of the card and centered. I just want it to not move while I kick that under and glue it to the card. Kick that side under and glue it to the card. Okay, oops. Got off, off the fold, hang on a second, let me do that again. Okay. This is pearlescent cardstock, so of course it's taking its sweet time on the glue. Okay, then I'm gonna turn around and do the same thing back over here, so. Adhesive under the tabs, or on the tabs, I guess I should say. Okay, then keeping everything flat, making sure that's right in the fold, which it already is because it's attached at the top. Then I kick under those two tabs, press them to the card. Okay, and then let's see what happens. Then as I close the card, it should bring the bench forward because of course I already trained it. Now, if those were inverted like that, your little arms, you could just pop them so that they're coming out. But that's the nice thing about training the bench first is it's basically already trained to fold down flat. Boom! Isn't that cool? And then now whatever I want to can go on the front of those little platforms. So I've decided on these little small ones out here. I'm going to put my pillows. Those can go at a pleasing angle or they could be straight. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you think looks the best. Okay, you can always close the card and give it a good press. And then I decided on a little tiny gnome on this one here. So adhesive on the front right there. 
I'll put my little tiny gnome against that. Okay, look at him, little cutie. All right, and then the last thing is I'm just gonna put my little grass pieces against the bottom of the bench post. Oh, I'm gonna have to come far in because of how my, uh, I didn't leave myself a lot of room on the outside with this four and a half inch card, but that's fine. Just bring them in a little bit. Okay, how quick and easy, oops, sorry. Trying to go fast because I know I don't have very much time in the video. Okay, so that is just a quick and easy little garden bench pop-up card using also the tiny gnomes, the long nature edges to the hello, that's new. And then this is our slim frames die set and long nature, oh, and tiny gnomes. Okay, let's talk about our show special. For the next week from August 14th through the 20th, 2021 on our website, karenberniston.com, we have automatically added a sale for 20% off all of the dies that are in our charms category. So you do not need a code. Charms are a very popular embellishment die that we offer in 24 different styles and themes. What's nice about these little embellishments being charms is that you have both options. So if you wanted to use your charms, here's one with the sweet treats charms, as a charm, then you could attach them by dangling off them off of jump rings or brads or twine. And they've always got that little hole at the top to do that really easily. But then let's say, you know, you didn't want your donut to be a charm, you just wanted to use it as a donut. Well, then you would just cut off the little hole at the top and then it becomes, you know, a standalone donut. So then maybe, you know, let's say you wanted to have a dog holding a donut. So that's what's nice about the charms is that you get kind of both, both options. If you need a hot dog charm that you're gonna dangle off of a project, then it comes with the little hole at the top that you could use, like I said, with a brad or a jump ring or twine. But then if you don't want it to be a charm, we'll just cut off the little hole and then you can, you know, have a giraffe eating a hot dog. So lots of different possibilities with our charm sets. Okay, but it gets even better because in our charm category, we actually have two pop-up dies that are in that category, which means they are part of the sale. So they are the circle charm pop-up and the charm accordion. The circle charm pop-up makes a quick and easy little generic pop-up that gives you the double duty decoration because the circle on the front actually pivots to become the inside decoration after you open it. So I love it when that happens. Then you've got uh, the little butterfly and the heart and a star come already in it. And then of course, all of our charm sets will fit on the charm circle charm pop-up. So there's one that Kelly Booth made using our wine charms. And you also get to choose your card size. So you can see the difference in card size there. The other one that's part of the sale is one of sort of the long time favorites, which is our charm accordion die set. So what's cool about this one, it makes a quick and easy little two page accordion pop-up, but it has a hinge die in it so you can actually take multiples and keep going. So if you wanted to make a four pager, you just connect two of them together. And so here's one that Fran Sabad made from our design team where she's got the little dangling flowers in the openings there. She's used a backyard charms, which is where the little fairy comes from, but she did take off the hole on the fairies. And then you can see those same backyard charms used here in the bottom. That's where you see the snail and all of those little um, flowers and the mushrooms, but then she's also sprinkled in the garden charms. And then here's one I made four pager using our winter charm. So you can see the little snowflake in the opening here. And this one has the gingerbread man. Let's see if I can get that where you can see it dangling in that little opening. And this one has the tree. Our website is karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>